What do Bigfoot, The Goonies, and a favorite 90s computer game all have in common? The country's 33rd state, Oregon. At the end of the Oregon Trail is a natural wonderland with towering waterfalls, rocky coastline, and a hipster urban scene. I'm Michael, and I've spent the last several weeks traveling to the Portland area for work. And in this video, I want to show you why this is a must-see part of the country. We'll visit the Columbia River Gorge, the stunning Oregon coastline, and Portland's changing cityscape. Welcome to Oregon. Think of this video as my love letter to the northwest corner of Oregon. I've spent much of the last several months working in this beautiful part of the Pacific Northwest, and I couldn't wait to share the beauty and grandeur with you. Oregon is one of the most beautiful states in the USA. The Pacific Northwest climate makes for beautiful leaves in the fall, foggy vistas, and lush pine forests that stretch from the state's largest city westward to the Pacific Ocean. I'll start this guide by taking you into the Columbia River Gorge to one of the most stunning natural wonders in the state. Leave your questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. About 30 miles east of Portland is one of the most photographed waterfalls in the state, the Multnomah Falls. The parking is right off the freeway and within a few steps, the mist of the Cascading Falls surrounds you. The lower falls are 69 feet tall and the upper falls are 542 feet tall. It's pretty big, it's pretty impressive. There are a few different viewpoints to take in the falls. All right, so this trail I think goes up closer to the falls, so that bridge. I can't tell if the water that's hitting me right now is from rain or mist from the waterfall. The falls, which are the tallest in the state, are fed from natural springs. A bridge spans across the top of the lower falls, providing an amazing view of this natural wonder. The bridge was built in 1915 and allows visitors access from the base of the falls along a winding trail to the top of the mountain. A lodge was built in the early 1900s in an agreement with the railroad and today houses a restaurant, gift shop, and public restrooms. These falls put off so much mist. It's already such a rainy day. It's been raining so much the entire week that uh, the falls are running really, really strong and it's very wet, but so, so incredible to see. It's so crazy to just be standing here feeling the mist from the falls. I mean, it's just such fresh water. Uh, it's just great. There is no fee to visit the falls, and on my visit, the parking was free. Apparently, you can bring your dog here, so that's pretty cool. The drive here along the freeway into the gorge is just stunning. It's a bit distracting trying to drive when everything around you is just so spectacularly beautiful. Like a waterfall here, a sweeping view over the river there. It's just so cool. You're on a super rainy day and there's barely anybody here, which is great for enjoying the falls. But in the summer, I hear it's really crowded. So try to come early. At the gift shop near the bottom of the falls, I found this little snow globe, which I wish I had brought home as a souvenir since it features so many of the highlights of the state from Mount Hood to the Pacific Coast, which is our next stop. At the western end of Highway 26 is the interchange with the Coast Highway 101 and the seaside town of Cannon Beach. The air is salty and the sights are spectacular. Start your visit with coffee from Sleepy Monk Coffee Roasters on Hemlock Street. Just for reference, we're about 90 minutes by car west of downtown Portland. This is Haystack Rock one of the most photographed and recognizable landmarks in the state. This rock sits just offshore in the wave break and stands 235 feet tall. This geological wonder attracts visitors to the wide open, dog-friendly beach. I'm here in November as the winter storms are beginning to move in, creating churning waves and king tides that wreak havoc on the shore. 
We started a walk on the beach with the bright sunshine, only to have a rainstorm blowing quickly off the water. Be prepared for a dramatically fast shift in the weather. We got soaked since we didn't have anything more than just a windbreaker jacket. If you have the chance to go at sunset like we did, do it. The sky in the late afternoon with the shadowy silhouette of Haystack Rock is just breathtaking. When you're in the area, consider making a trip to E. Cola State Park and hike some of the coastline trails. The town center has small shops and galleries to seek refuge when the rain begins. The coffee and chocolates from this shop, Cannon Beach Chocolate Cafe, were a great treat. Up the coast highway where the Columbia River meets the Pacific Ocean is the city of Astoria, Oregon. This monument at the top of the hill commemorates the epic journey of the Lewis and Clark expedition. Following the Louisiana Purchase, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark led an expedition to explore the new territory purchased from France. Indigenous women Sacagawea and others greatly assisted the journey to find a water route across the continent. The expedition reached the Pacific in 1805 near this spot, and today a commemorative column stands 110 feet over the mouth of the Columbia River. The imagery pictured on the column illustrates historical scenes including the Lewis and Clark expedition and the arrival of the railroad. You can climb the stairs inside the tower to the viewing deck at the top. It costs $5 per car to park, and on a sunny day, you can picnic here with a view of the bridge over to Washington State and the forest and waterways surrounding Astoria. Down in the city center, you can stroll along the riverfront or stop into one of the small shops. This town is where a number of scenes from the 1985 classic film, The Goonies, were filmed. It's a shame to leave, but it's time to head back east to base camp, the city of Portland, Oregon. Portland is a city of bridges, given its location near the confluence of the Willamette and Columbia Rivers. Go for a walk around downtown towards the Willamette Riverfront Park. I filmed most of these shots in late October and earlier November when the foliage was at its peak. The fall leaves, even in the middle of the city, were an amazing sight, especially since we don't get to see the fall foliage in Southern California where I live. When downtown, you have to make your way to Powell's Books. This institution is the largest independent bookstore. I've come in here on most of my trips and have found something new and interesting every time. Powell's Books sits in the Pearl District, which is a fashionable restaurant and gallery neighborhood. Couch Street has many of the high-end chain stores, while side streets have more small businesses and older buildings that just exude character. Some of my favorite places to eat in Portland are in the northwest part of the city along 21st Street and 23rd Street. For brunch, stop into Pine State Biscuits. We got chicken biscuits with a side of more biscuits and jam and butter and a side of hash browns. It's so many calories, but it was so good. This place is very popular and frequently has a line out the door to order. I really like this part of town. It just has this hometown vibe and feels very welcoming and inviting. For dinner, stop into one of my favorite restaurants called G Love. The menu is designed for sharing small plates, including skewers, vegetables, and an amazing ahi tuna avocado dish. I would order the chicken pork skewers, the focaccia bread, fingerling potatoes, and the crunchy avocado, along with a masterfully crafted cocktail. The staff were super sweet and gave me this little dessert on my way out. Check out Salt and Straw or 50 Licks Ice Cream for a Portland flavored dessert. For my full list of downtown Portland area recommendations, pause the video here. I'll wait and make sure to hit the like button while you're at it. Now that you know where to eat, I also want to tell you about this city's connection with gardens. Washington Park is in the West Hills of Portland and is home to the famed Portland Japanese Garden. The city is known for roses, and I'm told that these endless rows of rose bushes in the park's rose garden are in glorious bloom in the spring. Downtown has a mix of low to mid-rise buildings. 
The courthouse square is where the annual Christmas tree stands, which is close to the Pioneer Place Mall and much of the downtown shopping. There are a variety of hotels, including several Marriott brand hotels around the downtown. Consider the Bidwell Marriott, Hotel Vance, or the Nines if you're looking for an elevated stay downtown. Oregon exceeded my expectations. I'd never been to the state before this year, and the access to nature, the friendly people, and the food scene have me excited to keep coming back. There's just so much else in this state to explore, like Mount Hood, Bend, and Crater Lake. Did this video change your perception of Portland and the surrounding area? Check out one of these videos next.